Law and Home Affairs Minister Keishan Mugam has stressed that there are no free passes for anyone who commits sexual misconduct, including university students. He was responding to MPs' questions on how penalties are meted out to perpetrators. In an update, Mr. Shanmugam said Singapore's six autonomous universities handled 56 sexual misconduct cases in the past three years. 37 of these were reported to the police. There was insufficient evidence in two cases, while investigations into four others are ongoing. Of the remaining 31 cases, 16 were prosecuted in court. Ten of these were given jail sentences. The other 15 of the 31 cases received stern or conditional warnings. Mr. Shanmugam issued these numbers and an assurance to the House after a public outcry in the case of a female NUS undergraduate who was filmed in the shower. Cheryl Lin has more. These numbers show that some have been prosecuted depending on the facts, others have been given a second chance, and there are no free passes to university students or anyone else. Taking a no-nonsense approach does not mean that every offender must be or will be automatically charged in court. Police and AGC must look at the facts of each case and exercise discretion. Mr. Shimugam said the broad approach is to consider one, specific facts of the case, two, the severity of the offence, and three, aggravating or mitigating factors. He said generally there'd be no cause for leniency for aggravating factors like past convictions, premeditation, or a lack of remorse. Referring to the Monica Bay case, where she was filmed showering in Yusuf Hall at NUS, Mr. Shimugam says the perpetrator, Nicholas Lim, confessed voluntarily and almost immediately after committing the offence. Mr. Lim was also cooperative and did not circulate the video. The minister says Mr. Lim's conditional warning is a serious matter. A conditional warning means offender has been put on notice. He would know that the authorities have enough evidence and are prepared to press charges against him if he does not reform. If he commits a fresh offence during this period, he would be liable to be prosecuted for both the current offence and the subsequent fresh or new offence. In other words, not let off the hook for the earlier offence, he will pay for both. Mr Lim is on thin ice. He also emphasised the government's stern view on sexual misconduct, adding that the rigid meeting out of uniform penalties will not serve the wider public interest. Education Minister Ong Yi Kang says universities need to strengthen their penalties for sexual misconduct cases. Mr Ong has told Parliament there has been no discernible trend in the number of such cases handled by Singapore six universities over the last three years. He noted that out of the 56 cases they handled, Ten led to jail terms, but among those, there was only one expulsion, which was reduced to a suspension. We need to better balance the objectives of deterrence and redress for the victims against the rehabilitation of the offender. Balancing these objectives is important for an education institution, but it should not end up with penalties that are too soft and too lenient. The AU's disciplinary frameworks should therefore be stringent, but fair. Two strikes and you are out cannot be the standard application, but neither should expulsions be the default for all forms of misconduct. The penalty must continue to fit the offence, but there has to be a significant adjustment at the most egregious end of the spectrum of misconducts, when there are serious criminal offences that undermine the safety and security of university campuses. We must ensure that potential offenders know the severe consequences of their actions, including an impact on their future. There has to be a deterrent. Mr. Rong added public reaction to the incident showed Singaporeans have a strong sense of justice, but he warned against resorting to mob justice. But we should always refrain from trial by media, doxing and resorting to mob justice. No matter how wrong an offender is, we need to respect the due process. During this episode, the harshest punishment for Nicholas Lim came from the social media. I hope that as a society, we will give his family and him the time and space they need to reflect on his actions, to turn over a new leaf and move forward. 
Second Minister for Education Indrani Raja says institutes of higher learning will focus on better support for victims as part of its reviews. Ms. Indrani says that this is on top of the existing full-time counsellors who are on campus to help those victims. A large uh, group of uh, staff trained as para-counsellors will provide additional support. She adds that such support must extend beyond counselling. The minister also says that sexual misconduct can have lasting psychological and emotional impacts on victims and that's why there must be end-to-end -end support for victims. We should also ensure victims feel safe to step forward and report cases when they occur and seek help. A good support system must create psychological safety for victims, guide them through the processes and protocols involved in the management of their case, update them on investigations and ensure that their concerns and questions are addressed along the entire journey. All this must be done sensitively and with empathy.